Good morning to you and welcome to our service from St John's this morning on this Remembrance Sunday. Our Eucharist this morning will be led by our curate here, the Reverend Lyndon Webb. And in my role as Padre to the Royal British Legion, who of course is sadly not able to join us and, and indeed neither is anybody else this morning except across uh, the internet, but it's good to have you there. But in that role as Padre to the British Legion this morning, I shall be both preaching and leading our act of remembrance towards the end of our service. Friends, we meet in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Well, friends, welcome also from me to this service today at St. John's. Here we are again, us here in church and you at home. Uh, despite the strangeness, it is nevertheless very good to be gathered. And it is good especially to be gathered today, on this Remembrance Sunday, when we remember not only the courage and the strength which has shaped this country's past, but also the courage and the compassion which has shaped this year in this country. We come today to remember that and also to be remembered as Christ's body in this Eucharist, and we hope very much that you are sharing at home in an agape meal with us when the time comes. Today of all days, as we begin this second lockdown, it's good to remember that love from which nothing can separate us. We remain gathered together. And so, as we remember that love from which nothing can divide us, we come to pray for God's reconciliation and healing. Christ calls us to share the heavenly banquet of his love with all the saints in earth and heaven. Knowing our unworthiness and sin, let us ask from him both mercy and forgiveness. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have, we have not, not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And so, my sisters and my brothers, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all sin, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God, our refuge and strength, bring near the day when wars shall cease and poverty and pain shall end, that earth may know the peace of heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The parable of the ten bridesmaids. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. 
come out and meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and us. You have better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the banquet, into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open for us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you O Christ. Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When my husband Tony and I went on our cycling holiday in September, we cycled through the village of Rodney Stoke in Somerset, just outside Wells. Its village sign proudly states, we are a thankful village. And it's actually the first thankful village I have ever visited. Thankful villages, sometimes called blessed villages, are those from which all their members of the armed services fighting in World War I survived the war. Not a single loss of life. Do you know how many thankful villages there are? In England and Wales, just 53 against the tens of thousands of villages which suffered loss. In Scotland and Ireland, there are no thankful villages. Not a single community escaped the pain of loved ones never coming home. And that number reduces significantly when you look at how many villages also had no loss of life from armed forces in World War II. There are only 14 communities who lost no service personnel in either of the Great Wars. They're called doubly thankful villages. But 14 communities only, with no need for a war memorial commemorating their dead. When we gather on Remembrance Day to remember those who didn't come home, from these wars, and indeed those who gave their lives in wars since. We are not doing so to glorify war. We gather to remember because almost every community in this land suffered loss. And it is so important. Our collective memory recalls those who have died, that we collectively mourn, weep, shed tears, pray, collectively lament the horrors of war and recognise with thankfulness those who fought evil to let us have liberty. And as we honour those who died, we do so praying, yearning and striving for peace, that one day the disaster that is war will end across this world. We owe it to those who died fighting to bring peace, not just to honour their names, but to honour their legacy, to carry on the struggle for peace. Our giving time to pay our respects, to fall silent, to remember, is vital. It is not just honouring to those who died, the nations way of saying actually we are thankful but an opportunity to grapple with the destruction that war causes and keep alive the collective memory the experiences of war the bravery the fear the courage the comradeship the friendships within the troops supporting one another 
the personal experiences they had. Collective memory says their story is important and it is our story too. We go on telling it so we don't forget. I wonder if we might have an insight, just a glimmer, from all this year has brought into what collective community experience feels like, which might help us with how we understand and approach Remembrance Day. I'm not suggesting for a moment that what we are experiencing today is anything like what those who experienced who gave their lives um, in the war. But we have experienced something of trauma, of shock and disbelief, something of the unreality of having our personal lives caught up and catapulted into a global crisis far bigger than our own little lives that we always believed we had autonomy and control over. We too have many, many communities experiencing loss at this time. We too thought things would last a few months and be over by Christmas. And we are discovering the rather more long haul aspect. We need to not become weary and find ways of renewing our courage together. I am, as I said, not in any way making any crass comparisons between the horrors they experienced in war and the current pandemic though it has been horror for some this year. Many personal battles have been fought in hospitals and care homes the world over. But perhaps the insight we've had into what it feels like to go through something together, to process that experience through story, telling how it has been for us, has reminded us of the necessity of all our remembrances Maybe it helps us understand the importance of Remembrance Sunday. The need to remember is true of all societies, a need to tell over and over again the stories of trauma and loss, as well as those that speak of rescue, salvation and hope. We see this in the Old Testament and the Jewish passion for retelling all those those um, difficult stories and wonderful stories. And the power of this kind of remembering is recognised in the words of Christ at the Last Supper when he takes bread, blesses it and breaks it and says, do this in remembrance of me. Remembering is much more powerful than simply calling to mind. When we remember as a community, we bring what is relevant from the past into the present. In our remembering, there is healing. We are remembered, put back together. We bring the broken bits of our lives or our broken dreams into the bigger space that is the love of God who holds us and we enable the possibility of wholeness and peace to emerge for a future world. In the remembrance we enact around the altar, we are not just telling a story, but participating in the story, the story which has the power to set us free from violence and war, anxiety and fear, if we choose to let it. The season of remembrance helps us retell and reenact our stories to bring healing to ourselves and our nations. Our laying of wreaths, our rituals of prayers and silence on Remembrance Sunday are collective acts that say we do not forget. And by not forgetting, by facing things together, as a community, we overcome the horrors there have been. We declare hope for the future. We learn to become thankful people in spite of loss. Thankful God is with us, walking with us through brokenness, urging us on, giving us strength and courage 
to continue. Thankful for one another, walking with each other for support through whatever circumstances. That spirit of humanity seen in the comradeship of troops together in the trenches and on the fields seen in the love of local communities surrounding their vulnerable with protection and care. And thankful today, especially, for all those brave service personnel who gave their lives that we might live, who gave their tomorrows that we might have our today. In that sense, we are all thankful villages, thankful communities, feeling the pain of loss, but moving steadily towards that hope and light of God's kingdom, God's love, God's healing of a damaged world. A promise we can hold fast to of a new creation where there will be no more dying, no more pain, no more war. Amen. And so together as Christ's thankful village, let us declare our faith in the God who remembers every life. We believe, we believe in, in one God, God the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of, of heaven and earth, earth of, of all that is, is seen and, and unseen. We believe, we believe in, in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only Son of God, God Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. And so, in the power of the Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Loving God, we pray today that you would remember all who have given their lives in the name of freedom or justice, or peace. Remember those who offer their lives daily this year in the service of healing and in the care of the sick and the most vulnerable in our society. Remember those who are easily overlooked, who are willingly ignored, who struggle still under oppressive regimes and ideologies, who speak out still for freedom and human dignity.
remember the people separated from loved ones by violence and by war. The people who struggle to know when violence will end. May they remember hope today. Remember the people of North America, the United States. May they too know healing and peace after a time of division. Remember all of those who have been made vulnerable this year because of COVID. People who have suffered ill health, who have lost jobs, whose lives have become uncertain. Remember today your aching earth and help us to work for peace and healing in the soil, in the skies, in the seas. Remember today the people on our sick list the people in our prayers and on our hearts here at St. John's. And remember today all of those who have died recently, in particular, Jim Dimmock and Joan Edmonds. With all of the departed, Father, may they rest in peace and rise in glory. So, loving God, we give thanks as we remember that fellowship which cannot be broken either by social distancing or by death itself. Giving thanks for the unity of all creation, of the church, the saints living and departed and yet to come. We pray together. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And so, my friends, to crown all things, there must be love to bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, here in church and there at home. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I invite you to offer one another a sign of peace, either in your homes or more broadly in your hearts. Friends, also, As I lay the table here, if you're going to share in an agape meal with us, I invite you at home to prepare as well your food and drink, whatever that might be, whether or not it's bread and wine or something else. Lay your tables at the same time, if that's what you're planning to do.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. My friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should always sing of your glory, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For you are the hope of the nations, the builder of the city that is to come, your love made visible in Jesus Christ brings home the lost, restores the sinner and gives dignity to the despised. In his face, your light shines out, flooding lives with goodness and truth, gathering into one in your kingdom, a divided and broken humanity. And therefore, with all who can give voice in your creation, we glorify your name, forever praising you, and together saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, and might heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory, glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. 
blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. So united with all who have gone before us, we pray the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine, For thine is the kingdom, the power, the power and, and the, the glory, glory forever and ever. and ever. Amen. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though, Though we, we are, are many, we are, we are one, one body, body because, because we all share in one bread. bread. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the, the sin of the, of the world. Have, have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you take, take away the sin of the world. Have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. So friends, as we consume the consecrated elements here in church, invite you now to share, if you're doing so, in an agape meal at home. So if you are sharing in that agape meal, then friends, taste and see that God is good. And if you are not, then remember that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. God of peace, whose Son Jesus Christ proclaimed the kingdom and restored the broken to wholeness of life. Look with compassion on the anguish of the world and by your healing power make whole both people and nations through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we come to our act of remembrance. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint.
They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We, we will, will remember, remember them. them. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the Church, the Queen, the Commonwealth and all people, unity, peace and concord, and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.